Hey there everybody, my name is Ian Haig and I'm here to show you how to use Ease and Wiz. So I thought I would give you a little demonstration of how I put together this snippet which is from the demonstration video that lives on Lloyd Alvarez's aescripts.com Give your easing. Okay, so Let's begin by importing the Illustrator file with all of those elements. Give your easing.ai import as composition cropped layers so that I can animate the individual elements. Open up that comp and as you can see, nothing much going on. Everything is on a separate layer, which is great. So let's begin by animating the background. So I will just move everything else down a little bit, get that out of the way, and we'll just have the background fly in from the right to the left. I'll put a keyframe in there, keyframe in there, move it off there. Okay, now let's have a look. Sure enough, that moves from right to left, a bit dull. If I turn on the default easy ease, easing, and after effects, smooths out a little bit, but we could probably get it looking more dramatic than that. So this is where Ease and Wiz comes into play. So this is the Ease and Wiz palette. Obviously this is assuming you've installed it and everything's working nicely. There's a separate installation video uh, available on the website. So you've got easing types up here which are arranged from the most dramatic to the least dramatic. Sign uh, pretty much looks like the default Ease Easy Ease that After Effects uses. Expo is uh, like a very gradual kind of uh, acceleration and then hardcore fast velocity and it's a really cool effect and I use it all the time. So let's try that one. Expo in and out and apply that. Now what you'll see is that the values have become red which means that there's an expression applied. If I tap the E key twice you can see that's the expression we've got there in our expo or keyframes. Uh, to change that, it's as easy as just simply selecting a keyframe. Uh, you don't have to select all the keyframes, you can just select one, any one will do, because the expression is applied to the entire timeline for that property. Choose a different easing type, Quint, hit apply, and there's the new expression. It's updated. So we're going to try expo. Apply. If nothing is selected, you try selecting apply, nothing happens. So, fails silently, I believe is the term. Alright, so let's play that back. Now, that's a much more dramatic kind of easing. Uh, you can turn off the expression to see what it looked like before. Boring. Turn it on. Crazy exciting. Alright, let's move on. So, background, you're done. Let's animate, animate, animate. Let's animate some of the other elements, starting with give your the type. I will turn on 3D for all of these layers. The reason being, if I drop in a camera now, I can. Whoa! <laughs> and if I turn off depth of field, thank you. I can just zoom in on individual elements, moving the camera around rather than having to uh, animate those individually. So. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit fuzzy. The type is a little fuzzy. That's because it's an Illustrator file and we don't have continuous rasterize on, so I'll just turn that on right now. Thank you. All right. So we've zoomed in with the camera. That's looking pretty good. I want to animate, give your, uh, coming in from the top of the screen. And I'd like to do those separately, so I'll just duplicate the layer, call one of the layers give, call the other layer your, and put a mask on your and then on the other layer mask out give okay so now these are separate cool put in a I'm just gonna put in a keyframe at the for both of those layers at the beginning uh, maybe say 20 frames put in another keyframe and then offset them so that they're off the screen to begin with. Not, they don't have to be far off the screen, just a little bit. 
and now choose let's try circ as the easing type hit out and just I can apply it to multiple layers at once just select a uh, keyframe from the property that I'm trying to animate and hit apply yeah, they've gone red so that I know it's been applied if I apply it back now they come to a beautiful gentle rest and again you can see what they look like without the expression just disable the expression that's your linear and this is After Effects built in easy ease that looks looks good but not good enough now it's important to realize that when you've got the expression of applied the easing with expression completely ignores any sort of easing that you've already done on the keyframes it ignores your own curves or whatever it just completely overrides it with whatever uh, curve you've applied there so it's something to be aware of anyway so that's the beautiful circ I'll just offset those in time a little bit let's make your four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. nice give your alright now time to move out with the camera set a keyframe here uh, just turn off auto orientation so it doesn't start trying to rotate in 3D space and give us some weird effects and I just have to reset the position now and bam we're right back where we began so if I play that back give your and we pull out all well and good but we can apply easing to the camera as well expo looks particularly effective so again I've just got one of those keyframes selected hit apply and when I play it back much nicer you can actually have a look at the curves for any of these uh, properties when you've got easing was applied if I go into the graph editor with the position keyframe selected just expand that a little bit so you can see what I'm doing right now it just looks like it's all linear if you want to have a look at the actual result of the expression in the curve editor just reveal the expression and you just need to turn on this little icon here show post expression graph and then it will calculate what the curves look like taking into account the actual uh, expression so as you can see this is the expo out uh, curve and it's looking expo out yeah it's, it's looking pretty dramatic even the curve looks dramatic again it's easy enough to change if you want to just select the uh, select the keyframes I'll try and the type of easing to in and out hit apply and now you can see give your easing nice alright let's move on the animate these easing characters okay so first of all we have them all starting uh, so just before the camera is finished zooming out and I will set a uh, actually before I do anything I'll just move the anchor point of those so that they scale from the bottom alright so I'm just gonna flip those open move the anchor point there and then move them into position just gonna eyeball it not too worried about it put in a scale keyframe and another scale keyframe there and then set that to zero zero okay so now effectively give your scales up looks pretty good and you can just try let's see what that looks like with an expo on there not bad but I think we can probably make it more interesting uh, I am going to put the elastic which is one of the special kinds of easing on there elastic and just have it apply to the out keyframe they're still selected so I just hit apply Bump. and that is ridiculously subtle with elastic it's a good idea to give it some time to finish its elastic bouncing around so I just move those keyframes right out and let's have another look okay now I can really see some elasticity happening that's much better and then we can stagger those 
to get them all appearing one at a time using Paul Tersley's incredibly useful shift layers command. So I will say stagger selected layers from current time marker by three frames. Hit apply. Uh, okay, it, it's actually going to go from right to left. Not bad. If that's not what you're after though, all you have to do, I just hit undo, select them from the layer that you want first to the layer that you want last and then hit apply and now you can see that it's done them from left to right instead. Okay, so that's looking good. I think we're almost done. Finally, we'll just move the camera off the screen again so that uh, we're ready for whatever title we're going to use next. So, we'll just put a, another keyframe in there for the camera. Bam. And keyframe in there. And then just offset that by 1280 pixels. Just let After Effects do the mathematics for me. So we'll move it off the screen. My background is still in place. The reason being that that's a two-dimensional layer, so it's not affected by the camera. To get around that, all I have to do, if I still want to retain it being a, a 2D layer here, yet be affected by the camera, I'm just going to split it and make the duplicate a 3D layer. So now, when the camera moves, the background appears to move with it. Any second now. Nice. Alright, so there you have it. That is a bit of an overview for using Ease and Wiz. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about it. And thanks for watching. See you later.